Welcome, guys. So, it's a very uh, interesting situation that we find ourselves in. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome in. We're here just chatting about uh, what the hell is going on with Austin FC this week. I think that, uh, should I start a series on that? What the hell is going on with Austin this week? Uh, because I think the last month, um, there's been a lot to talk about. Uh, so I kind of want to just start off with, if anybody doesn't know what's going on, I think that's a good place to start is just going through kind of everything that I've found. And please, if you know anything more, please add it to uh, type in the chat. Or if you go down below, I'll actually pop a link here. What's up? What's up, you? Um, what should I do? Actually, um, I'm trying to think what the best way to get people in. I guess I can post it on. I just can post it down in chat as well. Um, oh, shit, that's the one. Give me one second. I'm trying to get a way if you guys want to hop into. What's going on, Alvaro? Alvaro? I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'm really bad with names. Um, I'm going to copy this link which is a link to my Discord server. If you guys have Discord, it'd be uh, probably the best way to get in and talk if you don't want to just um, type in the chat. Uh, if not, no big deal. You know, no pressure to do that. All right. I created a custom stadium for Austin FC. is 50,000. 50,000. You two parks. Okay. Okay. South Austin Stadium. Interesting. Um. But what we're really talking about here is the Cecilia Dominguez situation. Um, and then what you got actually, the other thing that I was going to do is do a poll. What should Austin FC do with Cecilia Dominguez? All right, there's a post uh, going up in the chat. Uh, just so you guys, if you want to know uh, what's going on, or to let me know your thoughts about what should happen with uh, Ceci moving forward. Um, so if you guys don't know what's going on, which I'm assuming a lot of people do, uh, but there's an investigation uh, into Cecilia Dominguez about a month ago, a little over a month ago, actually a little under a month ago, uh, investigating into a possible off-field misconduct. Um, what this means is that he is he was not able to participate in any team activities for the last month. Uh, however, now that the, that it's done, he's able to re uh, kind of reassociate with the team uh, contingent on participation in ongoing counseling. And that ongoing counseling is going to be a post evaluation from a program administrator from the league's substance and behavioral health program. And then they're going to determine what specific counseling programs Cecilia Dominguez has to participate in to be able to continue to play in the MLS and well, to continue to have the possibility of playing for the badge and for uh, in the MLS in general. Uh, the office of field misconduct is a report of a domestic dispute. Uh, I, I do think it is necessary to point out that it wasn't a domestic violence report this time that it was a domestic dispute <clears throat> because those are two very different things um uh, on on the afternoon of april the 8th police were called to the home of cecilia's ex-partner and quote in reference to a possible domestic violence victim uh 
end quote. And the alleged victim was, quote, not sure whether or not she wanted to report the allegations to police in this situation. Uh, this is all, by the way, all this information that I'm reading is from the uh, ESPN article that I have up next to me over here, uh, in addition to two different articles by uh, The Striker Texas, one written by load, Phil West, and the other written by what's the load? Jessica Luther. Uh, so credit to both of them, credit to the striker, and then also credit to ESPN for uh, where all this information is coming from. But, um, and this is just, I read these uh, over the last couple of days, trying to understand. So I have, so I'm knowledgeable on this to let you guys know uh, and, and, you know, let, let you guys know and give you guys the most obvious or the most understanding of the situation as far as I'm aware. Like I said at the beginning, if you have any other in information that I don't speak towards here, please, please do share it uh, in the chat, in Discord, whatever it is. Um, and if you guys want to <clears throat> get in there, share your uh, share your thoughts, hop into the Discord link that I posted in chat. I think I'm actually going to pin this. Yeah, there you go. The pin comment down in the in the, in the chat. Um, hop on there. It's probably it's the easiest way for me to um, be able to hear your guys thoughts, not just in chat and actually have you express your opinion on the situation. But going back to my notes, uh, the alleged victim was quote concerned that Cecilia Dominguez would call her and mistreat her over the phone. Um, <clears throat> this is due to the um, due to the, the report initially uh, and mistreat her over the phone, but she does not believe that he would quote it or sorry. Uh, this is a quote from the striker texas uh the alleged victim was quote concerned that dominguez would call her and mistreat her over the phone but does not believe that he would be aggressive with her in person and that's the end of that quote and then uh the, I'm, it's the ex-partner i'm gonna alternate between ex-partner and alleged victim um she has declined to i think this is also big she's declined to apply for a protective order against cecilio but she is concerned about her immigration status and wants to remain in the u.s now, when I read that, what is that? I, I don't understand what that means, as I, I don't have to. Alvarez says, let him play. See, I. it's a very, like I said, at the beginning, it's a very tough situation because it's like, I, I'm going off of this assuming that the club and the MLS and everybody associated with that knew about the situation from six years ago in Paraguay, that situation. I, I feel like they had to have known that at some point. And so... It's question like that part is it is a question of should he never have been signed in the first place? Probably. But the fact that he was signed and now this is another situation, which apparently there was nothing physical that happened. Which again, there is, I'm not saying that there was no abuse in this situation because there clearly was. I'm saying that it was not a physical abuse, which I think is, um, this is a very, it's a very tough way to talk about this um without making it sound insensitive towards his ex-partner uh in this situation but uh going back to what i was just saying what is the situation of her not being able to be in the u.s still is it because um she did they come to the u.s under like as a, a partnership and, and she's here under cecilia's work visa or something or in him relating uh, and having it relate to him playing for Austin or playing in the MLS. Is that why? It, it, does she not have her own visa or ability to stay in the US? I, I don't I don't understand what that means. That's just my thoughts on that. Um but uh so she she's she, she doesn't think that Cecilia is gonna be aggressive towards her it, from now on. Uh and it looks to be that she she hasn't pro, uh applied for a or declined to apply she, she actually said, no i don't want a protective order against him she's on a tourist visa okay so so it does have to do with him playing in the mls goal is that correct um but the report uh this report from the um from apd from the austin police department says that the elect victim has previously told a quote team friend about dominguez's abuse towards her and that um due to this she was deemed to be in possible danger as as um see it says what was deemed to be in possible danger as suspect was going to be suspended from his team as a result of her mentioning his abuse so this initial report from the eighth 
from April 8th was that she was possibly going to be in danger because of his... What it sounds like is he has anger problems. He has major, major anger problems. And it, in the past, he's taken that out on her and, and, and caused this domestic violence, domestic abuse, whatever you want to... However you want to call, call it. Uh, it's, I mean, there is a difference here, but I don't... I'm not going to get into the specific differences between the two. It's domestic violence, domestic abuse. Either way, it's bad. Um, and officers and the alleged victim were met by Austin FC sports psychology, psychi psychologist, can't speak, and a team support person at her house, at the ex-partner's house. And, and at this point, the ex-partner said, quote, there was some possible mental and emotional abuse but nothing physical. So it was it, this in, this instance, which is really what we're going to be talking about, is non-physical. Is there was no physical argument or physical abuse in this situation? There was six years ago, but not here. At the time of the meeting, it, uh, also police department said the report was only for documentation, and Dominguez was not arrested. So that I think also is is key is that there was never an arrest for Cecilia. Um, and then this is also from, I believe the strikers where I got this from a source with knowledge of the league's investigation said it was focused on whether there was a, there was physical abuse and found that there was quote, not sufficient evidence to support any alleged incident. Uh, however, the investigation only focused on Dominguez's time playing in the MLS, not the time, excuse me, not the time he was playing in Paraguay, which is the previous accusation that we've all heard about from 2016. Uh, so it's a very interesting situation in a sense of um, there's two separate instances of this violence here. Um, but if you're one of the people that hopped into the Discord, feel free to join. Uh, if you go down under Phoenix YouTube, uh, there should be you should be able to get into a general chat. Uh, and at that point, I can drag you down into where I'm at in the recording and streaming section. Um, and we can... You know, you can voice your opinion on that uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, it, it, I don't know. I, it, it's it's a very interesting situation. I'm on. I I'm part of the um, let him play and let him give him a second chance with the club. You know, th there's clearly things that he. I'm not saying at any way this weekend, pop him out there, start him, boom, he's fine. You know, blow past it. Don't doesn't matter. No, very much against that. It's definitely a, you need to wait a little bit. Maybe, is it a month? Is it three weeks? Is it six weeks? Is it two weeks? I don't know. Uh, but let him prove that he's not in that same situation, that he's not going to continually cause more problems for the team. Because I think that's definitely the last thing that we that any of us want is is. Dominguez causing more issues either with mainly with with his ex-partner or current partner if he is seeing somebody else um I, I know it, it seems from his social media perspective at least yes 100 percent he needs to earn the spot back well if you just compare on the field Finley and Dominguez Dominguez is better I don't I don't think anybody can argue that however in this situation Finley is the guy in that spot. He's proved it the last month. He's the starter there, and he needs to prove not only can he benefit the team by coming back, but that he can also benefit himself and the people that he's surrounding off the field outside of Austin FC, that he's not a shitty human being, effectively, and that he's not an abuser. He's not somebody that's going to um, kick his partner like he did six years ago. Um, if you guys aren't aware, I had a little bit of trouble trying to find this stuff, but the, so the past situations, um, these articles from Paraguay from about six, five or six years ago, quote said that, um, uh, okay. I think, uh, Hernan from We Are Awesome TV is, has hopped into the, into the, uh, the, the discord. If you want to hop into general, I can pull you down into where I'm at. We can, we can, you know, converse on, on this, on this situation. But like I'm saying with these past situations, uh, articles from Paraguay from 2016, from what I've seen, 
says that he kicked his partner three times, I believe, grabbed her by the neck, and threatened to rape her. I don't believe that there is any call, any proof that he followed through with that threat, but either way, it doesn't really matter. That threat is still very serious and needs to be you know, addressed at that. If he did, then that's another situation as well. Um, but Dominguez's partner at the time had reported him for physical and mental abuse, and, and another big thing is he didn't show up for the court. He didn't show up in court in Paraguay, and that led to a judge putting out an arrest, a war, an arrest warrant for him. So, uh, and I don't know what happened with the with that arrest, uh, that arrest uh, situation. I don't believe he st he still has a warrant out for his arrest in Paraguay, but I could be very wrong. But I want to kind of know your guys' opinions on uh, should he be able to play. What should Austin do with him? And looking at the poll that I put out, it's time between let him play and bench him until able to transfer. Him. So with uh, find a way to cancel his contract now, getting twenty five percent of the votes. So, what do you guys want? To, what do you guys think? Do you guys think he should be able to continue to play? Should he sit? What What do you guys want to see from Cecilio in the next week, two weeks, three weeks, month, month and a half, the the rest of the season? What what can he do, I, I think, is probably the right answer. What can he do to um, re regain your trust sounds wrong, but to, I guess, regain, have your ability it's a very interesting situation give me one second Trying to get, uh, I've heard and I believe is in here. Um, and might want to hop in and give us his thoughts. Uh, like I said, if you guys want to, if you're on Discord or have Discord, go down below, hit that, uh, the link that the pin link, uh, and then you can hop in here and I'll bring you in and you can say, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts on Cecilio. You know, I'm on boat with, with him being benched for the next while until he can either prove, probably should have put that in there as well is bench him until he can prove um he can prove something to to the fans to the team to something to, to somebody or other um that he's not this person that's being displayed in these articles um because it's a very interesting uh, i keep i keep going back and i keep saying that and, I, and it's just because i don't know a better way to say it i probably wanted to look at that Austin FC has tweeted something as well. Let me let me see if I can find that real fast. Um, let me see. Where, what did they say? Um, let's see. Where is it? Oh, that's our guy. What was that to? Was that to this the Fagu stuff? Oh, no. Gotcha. All right, that wasn't what I thought it was. But I... Uh, I don't know. I feel like... Should he start right away? No. Do, do I believe that he should have the ability to go in and prove something with the club and prove something to us as fans that have been supporting him for a year and a half, even after this initial incident happened six years ago? I, I don't think it's fair. Again, we're talking about fair in a situation where it's not nothing's fair in this situation. But I, I don't think it's right for us as fans to hop on the bandwagon instantly of 
he needs to be gone right now, today. Don't ever come back to this team. Don't ever put on the jersey. Don't ever step field, step foot on our field again. I, I don't necessarily think that's the right answer. I feel like if he can come in and he can show to his fellow teammates as well and say, hey, I fucked up. This is on me. You know, uh, it, it, as I feel like if he can take account of, you know, his problems and that he can take responsibility for that and change his point of view and change how he holds himself and shows himself in this situation after something like this, I feel like we should be able to say, hey, you know what? Okay, that was a problem. That was 100% a problem. You own that. So how do we move forward from here with him? Not... I, I'm waiting. I'm still. It's now been, I think, about 18 hours or so since that uh, notice was sent out. I believe it was yesterday evening, um, and I'm still waiting for a statement from the team or from him. I'm actually gonna go check his Instagram real fast um, and see if he's posted anything. I, I don't think he's on Twitter very much, but let me see. Um. Okay. No, he hasn't. The last post was April 24th on his kid's birthday, which had a picture of him and I believe his ex partner in that situation. I, I could be wrong. I'm assuming. Um, uh, but so it looks like they're, but again, that it, it, it's not unheard of for a ex-partner in this or a partner in this situation after something like this has happened to try and be all happy and there's no problem and a lot a lot of you know it, everything's fine kind of situation and i hope that that's not the situation i hope that she's not feeling pressured by him or by the the fans that support him or the court system or, or whoever or felt pressured by anybody to make it seem like everything's okay. Because at the end of the day, it's not. At the end of the day, nothing that, that he did is okay in the slightest. I mean, is it better that it's mental or physical abuse? I can't, re there's no answer to that. Probably not. Um, You know, you could say, oh, but he didn't actually physically do anything. Primo, yeah, exactly. And I think I think that's a, that's a kind of, I, 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 that was my mistake of not putting that up in this, uh, this poll is let him play. I guess let him play is that situation is I don't think you can have somebody like that just hop in immediately and and go. I, I think you definitely need to have him earn a spot back because like I was saying early, Finley's not better than he is. But I, I think at this point, Finley's not worse than he is. But Finley's the guy that's been in there that's been gelling with the team for six, seven, eight games at this point. I think six games since Cecilio played last. I'm not mistaken. Um, Austin FC. When was the last time that Cecilio played? Uh, was it? Because it was actually before April. Seattle game that he started. Okay, yeah. So I think it was the Seattle game. The 1-1 one, one draw against Seattle was the last time that he played for the team. I believe. Let me check. He didn't start the San Jose game, nor did he come on, correct? Magu Finley started. Yeah, he wasn't on the bench even for that game. Yeah, so uh, he hasn't played since San Jose. So San Jose, San Jose, Minnesota, D.C., San Antonio, Austin, or Vancouver, Houston. It's been six games. Yeah, it was six games since he um, since he's played for the team. Uh, and, and and you look at that and you get a, a draw, right against San Jose, four wins: Minnesota, DC, Vancouver, Houston, and the loss against San Antonio. I mean, I don't think that you disrupt that. I think I think definitely this week, in, in three days, going into uh, going into this game against against LA is hey. You're not even on the bench. Go sit in the box or sit at home or wherever you, you know, if you're in Austin, go sit in the box or go sit at home. You know, and you're not, you're not even on the bench at this point, but maybe, you know, maybe against Salt Lake, he's on the bench and maybe against LA he's on the bench. 
Um, and and I, I just don't think it's necessarily right for us as fans to kick in on the curb immediately. It's yes, okay, you've seen a lot of people being like, oh, it's a repeat offender. The best instance of what's happening in the future is what happened in the past. Okay, so nobody gets another chance. Nobody gets, you know, what happened to... Yeah, okay, you screwed up once. You you go back on it. You say, okay, I'm sorry, and you move on. You do it a second time, you get a little stiffer penalties. You do it a third time, and I think you're you're jail for, for this situation. You know, but I think in general, it's first time you kind of let it slide. Not not domestic violence or domestic abuse. I'm just saying if you screw up, you know, if you break league rules or something you know if you're smoking pot or something like that because that's uh, that's against pretty much all sports rules you know you smoke a pot once cool move on you know get a couple of games suspension you move on you do it a second time you go rehab you know you you have some more drastic issues you do it a third time you're done you know it's like i feel like there needs to be yeah okay we we gave him a second chance. we didn't we never gave him a second chance you know we weren't part of his world until two years ago. And I think that that definitely has to do with. We're going to see what if you guys tag me in anything. Nope. Okay. Cool. All right. Nothing on that. Let me check. Also, if you guys want to um, tag me in anything on Twitter, if you see, what does this guy say? Uh, the Slurp Juice Loosener. Is in there? Uh, nobody's entitled to play for a team. Nobody, especially consistently underperforming DP, who we know shouldn't be on, shouldn't have been signed in the first place. Even if he scored a goal, if he scored a goal a game and was MVP candidate, I would want him off the team. But a forward with nine goals and 37, 39, 38 matches, is this really the problematic hero you're willing to die on a trash heap of a hill for? The guy whose bullshit could have derailed the season? See, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that necessarily. If you're not saying, hey, kick him to the curb right now, you're dying on a trash heap of a hill. I, I don't agree with that. Uh, it's also funny to see APD not filing charges as a standard that as the standard that abuse took place or not. Multiple studies have shown that 40% of cops themselves are domestic ab domestic abusers. Police frequently are biased towards or have solidarity with male abusers. Uh, I mean, that's a very different thing. Even people who say they're, quote, real fans and the only thing they care about is the team do not do themselves any favors by defending a player who is questionable. DP to begin with, you want the team to do better. Let's get a real big DP and trade Cecilio ASAP. Yeah, see, I'm not I'm not opposed to to kicking him out after the you know either in the summer transfer window, the European summer transfer window, at the end of the season, whatever. I you guys have known I'm not I'm I've never really been on board with Cecilio as a player for eight nine well about a year now I guess a little under a year. Even like halfway through last season, I was like, he's on the ground way too much. But I don't think that necessarily means that we get him gone today. You know, I, I think what would be great is if he could come in to the team next week, whatever it is, not, not necessarily on the field, but come into the facilities and, and own up to him, you know, own up to his fellow teammates, his, you know, his peers and be like, hey, you know, I'm going to take a stand against this. I've screwed up like this in the past. I'm going to be the front runner to support whatever this, that, and the other. And I think it'd be great for him to kind of spearhead, not being forced to. What does owning up look like to you? That's a good question. Um, I think owning up in, in the first case would be doing more than I, I hope I hope that we as fans and we as viewers of the MLS get to see what these programs are that he's having to partake in that he's having to participate in and I I want to see from him more than that I want to see okay you have to go to uh program a and b you know you have to go to a 
anger management course and you have to go to a family counseling course course right okay cool so i got to do those two things i want to see you then go to another to a regular therapist you know just a general therapist i want to see you go to something else you know i want to see you say okay you're making me do a and b here let me do c and d as well let me let me do more than what you're requiring me to do because i because this is a problem that i have and i want to fix this for my own sake I don't care, you know, I, I, I would like to know at some point, oh, I just hit my elbow on my desk, that hurt. Um, I, I'd like to know if he, while he was back in Paraguay, which I believe he was this entire time, if he was doing anything about this. Was he going to, to therapy? Was he, you know, how much contact did he have with uh, said ex-partner or and kid, who I believe are both in the States? I might be wrong or maybe they're in peril I don't, I don't know does anybody know where his kid and partner are at this point do the club is some owning up to do and if so what does that look like for them the club um i'd like to know if the club knew about the i, I think the club needs to own up and say hey yes we knew about this uh they're currently in the u.s okay that, that's what i thought um so did like did he have any uh wait what happened uh so jordan uh, we're talking about Cecilio Dominguez. He's been reinstated by the MLS uh, from his month-long suspension due to uh, a, a domestic disturbance case um, or domestic disturbance call on the 8th of April. Uh, he's been uh, reinstated by the MLS, so he's able to join as of yesterday afternoon. He's been able to join back with the club and uh, continue playing in the MLS. So I'm I'm talking to everybody like what if they want to see him back, if they want to see him gone today, do they want to see him, you know, move on from him in general as if, you know, this is just part of the issue and not the whole issue with wanting him gone or if this is part of the reason not the whole reason they want him gone, if that makes sense. I don't know if I clarified that or made that sound normal. Um but I, I think the biggest thing that I want to see from the club is did they know or not know about the previous incidents? the the uh the domestic violence domestic abuse uh from 2016. that's what i want to know from the club if they knew okay then then i think we're in a different spot than we are now anyway because at that point then you can't hold what he did six years ago against him right now you know because I mean, I don't know. I, I think you can personally hold it against him and you can say, I don't like this guy because of what he did then. But I don't think that that's any grounds for him not being on the team. You know what I mean? You can dislike players on your team all you want. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, and I'm not saying that you, oh, you have to, you have to like him. You have to be on board with him being back. No, if you don't like the guy, you don't like the guy. Like, there's nothing you can do. If you want him off the team, you want him off the team. I want him off the team. I've wanted him off the team since last summer since like last European summer transfer window. I didn't think that he was great. I thought he spent too much time on the ground, but I, I don't, I, I, it's a very, it, it, it's something you really have to watch how you say it to, you have to watch how you say what you, and what you say. Um, like verbiage wise, because it can be misconstrued very easily. Um, but Stefani, I think, does that offer your, or does that answer your question of what do I believe the club needs to do? I think the club needs to say, hey, we're not, you know, because the club needs to take a statement. But at the same time, if, they're, if their statement is, hey, we don't, the worst thing that could have happened is they just didn't do anything about it. It would have become Portland. It would have become exactly what what happened in Portland. And that's why everybody here, as I live in Portland, I don't know if you guys, uh, there's a lot of new people in here. So uh, if you don't know, I'm from Port, I'm from Austin originally, but I've lived in Portland for the last two and a half years or so, a little over two years. Um, Basically since COVID started, I was up here. Um, and so I, I, here, there's a lot of people that don't like Portland because they're covering, they're covering up, their front office covered up uh, a lot of SA... Uh, up here and and I think that it was great for for Austin just say hey you know what yep this happened 
just hey guys th this is going on we're just letting you know you know it's a big deal we're letting you know i that's 100 percent. i'm glad that that's the route that they went and they said hey there's been a problem cool we're letting you guys know this is how we're handling it but now I i'm questioning because the fact it's been now almost a day since the reports have come out what's going on you know uh where what's going on where where's the statement from the club i think the club needs to say something now i think the club needs to have some sort of uh um response to this and if you guys want to read the articles that i uh that i have that i've read these notes from at the beginning of the stream um i'll link them in chat if you want them or if you're in the discord i'll dm them to you or whatever but i i still if, if anybody's in the uh in the discord and wants to kind of come on and say their piece please feel free to just hop in any one of the voice channels there anyone that has the speaker next to it um you can't see the one you can't hop in the ones that have the lock um specifically the one i'm in can i change this Yes. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, there we go. That one. Cool. Okay. There. You guys should. Uh, there should be a a uh, a voice channel that if you go all the way down um, under Phoenix YouTube. I mean, yeah, and I think that's part of it. Um, but if you guys want to hop in the waiting room, I can drag some of you guys in and uh, and get your point of view on it. If you want to, if you want to share something specifically. But, uh, I mean, I, I think that that's, Louis, what you just said, of will fans want an explanation from Claudia Reina? Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. I think the, I think it definitely should be a, hey, you know, we we knew about this situation. These are the things that we've done as a front office um, in this situation. And this is how we start, you know, maybe not give too much detail about the actual investigation itself, because I understand that that's... Necessarily, comp I don't know if that's actually public records or not. Um, almost out of water. Um, I don't know if that's public records or not, but I think it's definitely needs to be spoken about. Either I, I don't know necessarily from Claudia Rainey specifically, but from the front office, absolutely. It's absolutely from the front office. Something ha has to be said from the front office, absolutely. Um, I think my dad, I was talking to my dad about it this morning, and I think he sent the right. So this is what my dad said. I don't know. If you guys are in there, in here recently, you know my dad. Um, he's a supporter. Got season tickets since day one. Um, so he said, I think it's, or this, is what he said, this is what he texted me uh, specifically. Uh, I think it's an opportunity to engage the community and talk about domestic violence, whether he plays or not. Also, FC could be a genuine leader in the community and really connect with fans in a meaningful way. Uh, my hope is that they put him back on the field and get out in front of this issue. Seeing all players make a big dent in domestic violence and toxic masculinity would be groundbreaking and support their teammate, his kids, and his former partner. And I definitely think that that's, that's the right way to do it, is I think that there needs to be um, some action from the club. What that is, couldn't tell you. Um, I mean, true, yeah. Right, Stephanie. I mean, that, that's that's definitely true. And, and so, I, see, I didn't even. I, I'll fully admit. I'll be the first one to admit. I did not give two flying shits about the MLS three years ago, four years, ago, we'll say, uh, before MLS to ATX. Oh, I have my I was various on, not the MLS to ATX uh, one that I have. Um, I, I didn't care, so I didn't know. I don't know a whole lot about the the situations in New York, the situation up in Portland until recently. Um, I don't really know. So, so if that's the case, then then yeah, absolutely, I'd want some um, 
something from Claudia Rainier. He was Claudia Rainier the what was his role there? His role there. So he was also the sporting director there, okay. Yeah, so I, th I think definitely then some sort of um, some sort of statement from him would be nice. Then I, I would think I think that there should be some sort of statement at that point. Then if he if he's had a history with SA, then I think that that's definitely uh, necessary to have. What is this Austin FC season ticket member meet the team event? What is that? And how long ago was that announced? Hmm. How long ago was that announced? What is that? I just see, uh, I see, uh, we're Austin TV tweeting about, uh, um, this. All right, let's see what Chris Bills has to say about this. He's tweeted out this morning. I haven't seen it. Austin Austin Bats on Twitter um, has commented on my on my tweets as well, and I, I definitely I definitely res I, I agree with what he says. He says if the argument is that he shouldn't have been signed in the first place, I can understand that. But he did nothing recently that warrants being cut or sat. Otherwise, unless unless others have information I haven't seen, um, I, I definitely agree with the first part um, that if if the argument is that he shouldn't have been signed in the first place, yes, I would agree. But I don't believe that this situation necessarily goes for um um uh sorry i just completely lost my train of thought it was there for a second and then it was completely gone don't know where I was going with that. Um, yeah, what is this? Um, what is this event, though? 
what is this event that's going on? The a a ATXFC season ticket number eight, the team event. Also, what is it? Is it literally just a, a meet the team? Is it, are you just going in there to meet the, the team then? But I, I, I mean, I, I want to hear you guys more, more of y'all's opinions on this situation and what it means, um, to like what you're, what you got, what is, what is necessary? What would, like I said at the beginning, what would Cecilio have to do right now, right? Or tomorrow, you know, we'll say, uh, what would he have to do in the next 48, 72 hours to, um, To not have ev anybody want him gone. Yeah. No, that's not what I meant. That's what I meant. I don't know. Wording's weird. Um, but like, what what would what does he have to do for you guys? Preston, let's see what's up. Uh, he will need to be benched. There should be transparent communication of how he's processing through therapy and coaching and becoming a better human. Yeah. No, I that's exactly what I said. Yeah. I definitely, I want to see what is going on behind the scenes. I want to see what he is doing, what he's doing, what the club's doing to address domestic violence, domestic abuse, sexual assault, sexual assault, you know, all, uh, uh, everything above um, in, in the club, because I, I don't want this team to end up like Portland. Just the next 24, 48 hours. Okay, well, you know, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying like today, but like, what does he need to do moving forward to not have people hate him? Uh, hate him? That's not the right word. Uh, for people to be okay with him being on the team, I guess. Stephanie, I, I guess that's really what I'm asking. Is like, what would he need to do? Uh, was he guilty? Technically, uh, of which situation? I think is the other question. Um, and also, what does necessarily guilt mean? Um, because from what I've seen, he wasn't, there was no physical assault. There was no physical abuse this time. And I have to stress it this time. Um, but it, it, I believe that she felt threatened by what he was saying and or doing. Is how I've understood this. I could be wrong. But how I've understood is she felt to be in, in, she did not feel safe um due to his actions and or words um about her i think is kind of the situation I, are you guys following this the johnny depp amber heard case i think that's exactly what this situation is sort of not exactly um but i feel like i know second chances can be a lot for people he would need support from those closest to him to be better uh, mental abuse is just as bad as physical abuse and he needs to understand yeah and and, th and that's what i'm saying Preston. is i think that we definitely need to see um him going forward he needs to have public statement and transparency from him yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. um and, and and i think that uh the reason why i bring it back to the uh, johnny depp amber heard stuff is I, I don't know if you guys have that's why i asked if you're following it but um yeah but but Alvaro, I think I think the difference is there there in the past, we know based on previous reports from 2016 they threatened to rape her, which she, yep. So I wouldn't put that past him as the level. Yeah, and then that's and that's the exact thing. I think that there's a hundred percent, I'm not saying that what he's doing is fine, but there's a hundred percent a big, big, big difference between going through with that threat and just threatening it. You know, it is those are two very different things. Neither of them are good, neither of them are okay, neither of them should ever be out in this world, right? But I think that there's definitely a a difference in how you handle situation A and situation B. It's not like you just told her or she's yeah, right. No, it, it was it was definitely again, I can't say it was definitely anything. It's Alvaro, and I think I think that's where a lot of the, the fans stand is that we should never have signed him in the first place. But I, the the main issue at, at that comes with, well, we, we signed him. He's on the team. Now what do we do? You know, we, we made that error in the first place. And, and, and I think that's the first thing I want to hear from the club is 
did you or did you not know about his instances six years ago prior to signing him? It's a yes or no question. It's not that hard for the, for the club to put in a statement and say, hey, we knew about this. We knew we had a history, a history with this. In a defamation case, they're both abusers. Nobody's innocent in their case. The lawsuit, the lawsuit will be won by Johnny because specific. Yes. Yeah. The club. Preston, I, I see. I would agree. I think the club knew about that, but I want to know. Like, I want to actually know for a fact from Claudia Reina, from front office, from pre-court, from somebody. Did you or did you not know? A or B? One of the two. Give me a precise answer. Yes or no? That's it. That's the first thing I want to see, and I want to see that today. I want. I'm, I live on the West Coast. I want to see that by midnight my time. I want to see that by 2 a.m. Austin time. That gives you 12 hours. That gives you 10 hours. Um, nine and a half hours, technically. Uh, that gives you nine hours to provide a statement that should not be that hard to pre present. Um, but the reason why I brought up the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case is, uh, have you guys seen the Mega Pint clip? Like the actual clip that um, was submitted? Have you seen that? Where he's punching cabinets, like breaking cabinets, being very physically aggressive, not towards her, but in that situation with her. And she definitely feels unsafe. That's what this, uh, that's what I'm assuming this is, is that she definitely, I, you know, I don't know if it was threats necessarily against her or. Yeah, no, Stephanie. And, and that's, and that's the thing is, is, um, if you're throwing, so this is what, if you're throwing things, smashing stuff and shouting that you're going to rape someone slash kill somebody, whatever, right? Which there's been no, there's been no indication that that's what he said this instance, but we have, we have to definitely clarify what happened last time and what happened this time. Um, but you know, if somebody was smashing stuff, throwing stuff, shouting at you, um, degrading you in some way, whatever it is, you know, whatever was said, he, I'm not saying that you're wrong that he definitely didn't say any of that stuff, but I'm not saying that that's what he said. Um, nobody should feel safe in that situation. And yeah, I, I would, I would definitely think that, that he's, that it's, it's something definitely more than he was being a meanie. You know, he, he I, I think it by far, he has anger problems. I think he has anger issues. Um, I think he has a temper that goes from here to here in a second. And I think that needs to be addressed. And I think that, and that's what I'm saying, you know, if he is just going to, you know, general therapy or general counseling or you know whatever the mls says hey this is what you have to do i want him to do more than that i want him to double that or i want him to to take it on himself to do more to help you know whatever it is but it's technically that people are trying to say hang on hang on wait hold on but that is the technically that is the technically that people are it was just emotional. No, yeah, no, no, no. No, it, it wasn't just emotional slash mental abuse. It was emotional and mental and or mental abuse. And it's, you know, while it's not, it's not the same as physical abuse, it is still abuse, regardless of what it is. If you say something, if you mean something, if you touch something, that's a mad sentence. Um, you know, if, if you say something like that, if you degrade somebody like that, if you physically hit somebody in some in that way you know they're like that's a that's abuse that's assault that's whatever you know that is still wrong and i'm not i'm not saying that he's in the right and he oh he did nothing wrong and oh it's you know it's not that bad it's bad but it's not that bad no it's bad it is 100 percent a problem and it's a problem that i don't think that we should have in the future with this club and, and i'm i am not on board with him both for him, I've already, I started not being on board with him for his on the field shenanigans, but this is solidified that I don't want him on the club beyond this season. A hundred percent, without a doubt, beyond this season, he should not be on this club. That's where I stand. That's where I personally stand. And if more comes out about this at some point, you know, because we've just, it was a month long investigation that we've just said, hey, now. He's fine. He can come back and play. You know, if something else comes out that he's like specifically what he said, that might change my mind about, no, he should be gone tomorrow. You know, but at, at this point, I don't think that he, I don't think necessarily what he has done 
in this instance, and I think that's uh, that's the other kind of weird thing is that we're having to separate this instance and last instance, right? Because that was six years ago in a different country where, you know, domestic, is, uh, domestic abuse, domestic assault, sexual assault in general are all, um, in some countries, they're viewed on as normal, which I think is, is a bigger, wider issue that we need to uh, address as a society of that's never okay. Are we though? I guarantee she doesn't separate those instances. No, but we we do. We have we have to separate those instances because he wasn't suspended for what he did six years ago, right? He was suspended for what he did in March or April, whatever whatever that situation happened, right? He he's he was suspended in the situation that we have to. Why do we have to though? Because for for having him play this year, there there is definitely a dis there. There's a difference between last time and this time. Because before, so so two months ago, right? Did you support him as a member of the club? Did you say, yes, he should be playing for Austin FC? Two months ago, before this situation came to light, did you say, yeah, he should be on the team? You know, did you have any reason of why he should not be on the team? Not necessarily should he start, but should he be on the team and should he wear the very damn black? Because I think, I think that's where a key thing happens, is I think, should we have signed him in the first place, knowing that happened? Yes, because I didn't know about the previous incident. Right. Okay. So why is... So, so at that point, he was signed for the team, right? He was playing for the team, and we didn't have a problem with it. Yes, okay, we knew in the past that that happened. But I'm assuming that also the club and the league knew about that in the past. So I feel like at that point... There, were, there must have been things that he has done in the six years that made people think that he wasn't going to do it again. Correct? So I think at that point, you say, okay, cool, we, we were fine. We were fine with him playing for the team and doing this situation. Um, and now we did it again, and now we should change something. And I think that's fair. I think that's definitely fair to, to, to say. What makes you believe that that he's done something in this that he's done something? because so, so the reason why i think that he's done something in the six years is because that's something that is very you know because i'm assuming let me see um just played it two okay that he was signed in demo just that he was signed in demo well, what, so what I'm saying is that, right, is that he, the current and past instances of domestic violence. Oh, what, what do you mean? Yeah, is that, is that, I, I feel like at that point, let me see. Not necessarily charges were dropped in the past, but that does not equate to innocence or breath, right? It just means that it got swept over. But looks at it and said, okay, it's nothing. I mean, true. I don't know. I, I'm again, I this is me saying, okay, I hope that we were no we were made aware of that situation, right? Um we were made aware of that situation prior to when we signed him, right? And that we had a conversation with him or or his agent or something or whatever it is that you know made it seem like that wasn't that that something like that wasn't going to happen again this is just this is what i would hope in my head this is how i hope that that scenario would have gone most likely it didn't go that way because it never does um that that didn't make it right but that's likely a position that they saw they can ask and he can lie and manipulate the music like not true just because the club and our mls might have known about it and gave him the all good doesn't mean that he, we as fans should follow suit no and I, okay right and, and that's true yes the majority of fans did not know about the first situation right
I'm trying to figure out what I how I want to formulate my next sentence. Um, I, I feel like though the other thing that I'm that I'm considering in this situation is also if she I'm reading this line. Reports say that the elect victim quote was deemed to be in possible danger as suspect was going to be suspended from his team as a result of her mentioning abuse. That quote, and then also when she said quote she was concerned that Dominguez would call her and mistreat her over the phone but does not believe that he would be aggressive with her in person. Right. So in my head, that is, she doesn't think that he's going to be physical with her from, from now, or for, from, from this instant onward, right? I don't know, I just, and I know in my head that also, you know, right, say, Right, so we're, we're, we're all in agreement, effectively, that Ceci has anger problems. That he has major anger problems. So therefore, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, so if he loses his job with Austin, right, most likely he won't be signed with another team because of the last two instances. And by that, that could most likely would piss him off. Fair enough. So therefore, he could take that out on her at some point and cause a bigger issue. But I'm not saying that we keep him just to cause a different issue, but we need to hold him accountable for this instance. And okay, I'm, I'm trying to work in my head that. Okay, let's see. Um, I just because the club under MLS might have known about it, give a good okay. I read that. Uh, Luis, will the fans be okay if the clubs announce if the club announce that he is going to in programs to help him help himself like Minnesota United did the Chase Gasper? not play until ready. I think that's what he's doing. I think that's what he's doing. I, th I think that's the situation because uh, he, I don't know if, if he has been or will be soon evaluated by a program administrator from the league substance, sub substance and behavioral health program. He's going to be, if not, if, if not has been already evaluated by that stuff. Right. So, um, I wouldn't mind transferring him, but play him on the bench. We've done really well with him. Yes, yes, Gavin, that, that, um, uh, that's where I'm at right now. I think he should be transferred out at some point, whether that's the summer or whether that's the end of the season, whatever it is, right? The summer, European summer or European winter transfer windows. Either one, I'm on board with him getting out of here. I don't think, like I said earlier, I don't think past the end of the season or, you know, past the end of this league year, he should still be on the team one way or another. I said that they did know about it. How does that shape your position on whether or not he should stay? No, but that's my, that's my, I mean, true. I don't, I don't think that necessarily what he's done this time and the, and, and I understand that there's the, the power dynamic. No, I understand that. But at the same time, I also think that that power situation, if that power dynamic was that bad, why would she have said something to somebody in the first place? Right. If, she's if you can if you're saying oh you know she doesn't think he's gonna hit her she he doesn't she doesn't think that he's you know he might call her and mistreat her and, and yell at her over the phone or whatever um the benefit of doing that over the phone is you can just move the phone in in the call and you're done um and then call the cops or something um she said it to a friend she said it to a team friend she said it to somebody else associated with the club she didn't just say it to a friend. She said it to somebody associated with the team. Uh, that's the right one. No. Yes, correct. Correct. Why do you think he shouldn't be on the team past the season? In addition to, to this situation, I don't want somebody like this, uh, you know, somebody that, that's had a, a history of this um, on the team. But at the same time, I don't believe that this situation is necessarily enough to end his contract currently. I don't think that this is enough to end the contract because there was.
I was gonna say because there was no physical as me, but it's still. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's enough to 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 cancel and and to void his contract based off this, based off the fact that he was cleared as well. Again, I'm not saying that he didn't do anything. I'm not saying that cleared equals innocence. I'm not saying that. I'm saying cleared equals not guilty. Because that's, uh, whether you, you agree with that or not, that is fact. Cleared and reinstated by the MLS means that he was not found guilty in this situation. Because if we got rid of him now, we have to pay, we have to pay out the contract or pay out a certain situation and that would damage the club further i'm thinking about this both from what is best for the club in addition to best for the fans in addition to best for him i think the best option is we try to transfer him out in the winter months if we can't transfer out in the winter months we try and transfer him out in or sorry in in the summer transfer window if we can't do it then then we try and transfer it then in the winter and then at that point if we can't do it then then we eat the bullet and we move on it's the same re i mean it's a very different reason but it's the same as with uh, Redis still being on the team, right? It's Rodney Redis still being on the team. To get him off the team today would damage the club for the future. Right? So with him, it is again, if we can transfer Redis out in the winter or the summer, again, for a completely different reason, 100% a very, very different reason. But a, a, again, I'm thinking of what is the best for said player because i don't think I, you know i'm not one that's gonna say hey cecilia is a terrible person should never do anything ever again no okay you know the first time again should he need does he need to be held responsible yes 100 percent. should he never touch a soccer field again no probably not you know um does he need a does he need whether that's you know whether owning up to it and 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 you know Paying his time, if that's in jail, if that's in therapy, if that's whatever, you know, it, whatever it is, he needs to do his time. He needs to spend his time. He needs to do the time for the crime. Yeah. But I, and I feel like we also need to also think of what's best for the, the club in that situation is I think we're off to a very, very good start with this by the club saying, hey, guys, heads up. This guy did something. We're addressing it. We're dealing with it right now. I'm also, I'm waiting for, before I make any set decisions, this is just my opinions as of right now. I think a better, I think a better end result for him and for the club and for his ex-partner in, in this situation is if he owns up, like I was saying earlier, and he is the one that's spearheading this whole thing. And he's the one that's saying, okay, yep, I screwed up here. I screwed up here. I'm going to do X, Y, Z, one, two, and three about it, you know, and these are all legitimately good things. He's public about it. He's not hiding behind a closet. He's not doing this, that, or the other. I think that's of, and then that puts us in a very good situation. Again, stuff like this, as sad as it is, stuff like this happens across every single league, across every single sport on planet Earth. And again, people are held for it. Uh, you think of, you know, uh, this time, assuming it's not anything like um, the Ray Rice situation, right? But uh, uh, did not did Ray Rice not come back then? That was, that was seven years ago, I believe. Twenty fourteen offseason. Did he not come back after that? No, he didn't. But, you know, there, there's there's abusers, there's assault, you know, stuff like that. I, again, I'm not saying that it's right, and I'm, I'm not saying that we should... I guess, I mean, oh, okay, yeah. Um, again, I'm not saying that he should, you know, be praised for coming back. No, not at all. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think it should be... That cut and dry. I, I don't think it's a black and white situation like everybody else is saying. I think there's definitely a gray area. And I think we're in that gray area right now. And the question is, you know, what do what does the club do? What does Sessi do? And what do the team members do to move us into a to move us forward into a better situation than we are at right now? 
is really what it is. What that is, like what is what needs to be done until then, I couldn't tell you. I've never been in a situation like this. I've never been, um, to my knowledge, of a coworker, a friend, a you know, fill in the blank, whatever, somebody that I know has been charged or investigated or something like this. I don't know. I've never been I've never been in his situation. I've never been in his ex-partner situation. And I've never been in the club situation. So I, I what he can do and what the club can do moving forward, I don't know and I don't know if there is a right answer to it. Right? Because say um say 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 the club cuts him off done that's the wipe your heads we're clean you're gone done that's it and then he goes and takes his anger from losing his job due to what his ex-partner said and goes and takes out his anger against her again and we could have stopped that by toughening it up saying hey we we don't agree with what you're doing but we're also going to hold you responsible and we are going to to tell you Hey, you got to do this, 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 and this. And if not, it's on you. It's on your ass for not doing it. You know, it's not her. It's not her fault. It's not our fault. It's not your second cousin, your dog's fault. You know, it's your fault that this is happening. And you're, you're the one that's going to, you know, we're giving you a way out of this. Not, not a way out, but we're giving you a way to rectify the situation. Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. Oh, weird. There's people talking in that uh, in the in the music. I don't know if you guys can really hear it. Um, but I I think it definitely. I'm on one of the threads in the Slack channel right now on Phil's question from this morning, and, and there's just. I, I just saw this. I read Goldberg's comment from three hours ago. And then for about an hour ago, there was some uh, Mike Ellison has posted another long, um, long comment here that I'll read for you. Uh, Mike Ellison from uh, the, the Los Verdes Slack channel. Big up Los Verdes. Um, I, I disagree with the statement that they put out this morning, but we've kind of go over, gone over that last hour and a half. Um, Mike Ellison says, I appreciate your position on the situation, Goldberg, and I think I, I think there'd be a long time if I a long there'd be a long time if I felt the same way, re needing quote enough information. In this specific instance, enough information for me was learning his past and knowing that the victim and people within his organization were negatively affected. People within this organization were negatively affected by his behavior. As someone who's been actively involved in the No Project uh, Project No Domestic Violence in Austin FC. Channel, I think uh, calling it a snap judgment is ill-informed, though. So I could rifle, I could rile folks up given their connection uh, to the project. For content, we've had two hour long, two hour long meetings over the course of the of the almost month the channel's been active for, and daily discussions in the channel. When Cecilia was first removed from team activities, discussions started in multiple channels for days, and the channel was made as a way to streamline that conversation. Waiting nearly a full month before issuing a statement provided a lot of folks of time for folks to weigh in and allow the supporter group to craft a statement that reflected the, the reflected the members that wanted to have input on it. With any organization with this big, with decentral, yeah, with decentralized leadership and leadership opportunities, it's inevitable that folks will disagree and wish things were handled differently. But ultimately, the thing I've learned over my year in this supporter group is that if I want my input heard, I need to be involved with it more from the start. That said, it's certain it's certainly in line with the Los Verdes code of conduct not to support abusers. And the statement ultimately does demand Cecilio out of the team like, like some of the folks involved had wanted from the beginning because of those exact desires to learn more. The statement says, based on the information provided to date, Los Verdes does not support Cecilio Dominguez continuing to play for the Austin FC because we tried to have a conversation with the front office and we where we could understand more about what happened and we're given the runaround we're left to the information at hand yes because they can't disclose this information up until yesterday night 
nothing of this could be talked about with people outside the investigation. That's how these things work. So there, there can be a whole lot of other things that were said in this situation, in this um, investigation that we have no idea about. Cecilio could have said, yeah, okay, I, I fucked up. You know, I, 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 I caused this big problem. But since this problem happened, this problem happened, could have, this, let's speak, this problem, right, could have happened back in January, right? Say so this problem, this, this, this instance that she was talking about that caused the report could have happened back then, right? It could have happened a month ago. And Dominguez said, hey, since then, I've been in therapy, I've been in, I've been doing X, Y, and Z. But we can't, we don't know that. Not because the, the front office isn't disclosing that information or that the league isn't disclosing that information, but because the league and club cannot. They are, they cannot because at, at, while this is a league investigation, this is an MLS investigation, this does result in a police investigation as well. And police investigations are not, as far as I'm aware, are not allowed to be discussed outside of said investigation until there is some result. Now we've gotten the result. Now we're waiting for more statements to be had from the club, from the league, from Cecilio himself, from maybe even from the, the ex-partner if she, if she feels so inclined to make a statement, right? And, and a lot of people are going to say, you know, like Stephanie pointed out, rightfully so, as what she said at 2.36, um, she said that she didn't believe he would be physical. Please recognize the power dynamic here. And yes, 100%. There is, there is some sort of power dynamic in this situation, right? Just like in any situation like this, there is some sort of power dynamic. The question is, in what way does that influence our opinions, their opinions, the club's opinions, the MLS opinions, everybody's opinions on said information? Again, you are never, ever in this situation going to get legitimately A, B, C, then D happened in this order, just like this. You're never going to get that. He's going to have one point of view. She's going to have another point of view. This, this team psychiatrist, psychologist that was there is going to have another point of view. Um, APD is going to have a point of view. Everybody else is going to have a point of view. We're never going to know what legitimately happened the day of this abuse or the days of this abuse, whatever it was. And so I think personally, I think the best thing that can come of this is he stays on this team for now. I declare this for now. I think I'm in a line with 42% of the votes here saying bench him until he's we're able to transfer him. And you know, if that is, we have to cut him, we have to cut him. That's, that's, this is, but again, I, I don't necessarily think I need to think if we're going to cut him, we need to be strategic on it. That doesn't cause extra, uh, issue, whether that is extra issue on the club payment fees, the, you know, cash that the club has, um, assault on his part any other anger issues that he has on his part towards his ex-partner uh and, and i believe also mother to his child i believe it's the same individual i could be wrong though. but it, this whole thing is a very twisted unclear gray area of this team and it's going to be a problem and i believe that you know everybody's saying oh you know if he comes back and we win the league, the star on our badge, you know, this star will always have an asterisk by it. No, it won't. No, it won't. Because we'll also remember the fact that I don't think that Cecilio Dominguez will ever start another game unless due to injury. I do not believe he will ever start another game. I would rather see Rodney Breda start than him. However, I don't believe that the right answer is, is cutting him out and completely ending that today. I don't think it's the right thing, you know, it cannot be swayed to believe that's the right thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. But like I said earlier, there is not a right and a wrong way forward from this. Um, but I'm going to put it out there one more time. If you guys want to come in here and actually speak with me, not just in chat over here, go down below on the, excuse me, on the chat. You'll see I pinned a discord link. Go ahead, hop in the Discord, hop in the waiting room. I'm gonna go fill up my water real fast. Boom. I'm gonna go fill up my water real fast. Uh, and if anybody's in the waiting room when I get back, uh, let's talk, let's have a discussion. Let's have an actual civil one-to-one -one conversation about what 
what the situation means and, and what you think is the the right way to to handle this moving forward but i'll be right back So we're back. Does anybody have any final things to say um, about the situation at hand? Um, but any final words? So I'm about to end. We've been we've been going for about an hour and a half. Um, I might be live again later with some gaming content. Very different situation uh, than this. Um, but I might be live later with some gaming content. I've also posted a TikTok up there not about this but just a post to tiktok please go check it out if you feel so inclined it does help me out so i'm trying to grow um my online presence we'll say but uh yeah if nobody has any final thoughts uh i'm gonna wrap it up go ahead and wrap it up um but i hope you guys have enjoyed uh i i'm like i do like i've said before i don't know if you guys uh know this i do uh watch parties pretty much every every game for Austin FC if I'm able to watch the game. Um, so if you are new, please feel free to go down below and hit that subscribe button. There it is. Go and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell if you're new, and go ahead and like the video because it has helped me kind of share my opinions and my uh, content out to the world of, of YouTube and the world of Austin FC, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. Um, I'm in the We Are Austin TV Twitter space pretty much every time after the game. Uh, voicing and uh, voicing my opinions on the game, the team, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, but uh, if you guys are new, feel free to go to my little help. Click that like button. We're on our way to 200 subs. We're at 165, I believe 167, somewhere around there with Alvaro. Alvaro, I do apologize if, if I have mispronounced your name, but I'm going to end stream there. Uh, like I said, I might be live later today. Keep up to date on Twitter and all that information down below up into the discord i'd love to uh co-host some i'd love to have you uh anybody on here special guests for the watch parties you yeah. know we had a good group of guys a good group of people uh around during those watch parties a couple uh one of the new york cfc fans uh has been in here he's been in my for a while a couple uh uh pretty regular people are in here awesome fans jordan's come in recently Hughes come in as well over the last couple of weeks and uh, a couple of good, a uh, couple of fun uh, Colorado Rapids fans. So if you guys do, if you're, if you're not at the game, if you're watching the game at home, away games, all that kind of stuff, please feel free to stop by uh, and let me know. Let me know. I'd love to have you guys on for uh, for some uh, VIP stuff. Not VIP stuff, but some uh, special guests on the streams. But for now, take care. Peace. Have a good uh, week, weekend, whatever it is, everybody. Enjoy your Thursday night, Friday, and I'll see you guys on Mother's Day for the Austin FC game. Peace out.